All right. Well, welcome everyone. Sorry, I'm not on video. I'm having some technical difficulties. Um, the Riverside system does not like ring for some reason. Um, but thank you for joining the January um, City of Williamsburg Economic Development Authority Roundtable. We're very excited to have um, Dean Rousseau as four, and I think South Dota's his vice chair is also going to be on today. Um, so really appreciate everyone taking the time to join us today and getting to hear um, the wonderful presentation we're getting ready to have. So um, Dean joined SCORE in 2010, shortly after moving to Williamsburg, and he previously served over 20 years in the Army and then conducted engineering research and development and business development for large defense-oriented corporations. Um, he holds a master's degree in industrial engineering from Georgia Tech and an MBA from Georgia State University. And as a Williamsburg SCORE chapter chair, he interacts with the chamber and other community organizations. And um, I'm sorry, I can't see attendees since I'm having the difficulties, but it's Sal on. So Sal's the vice chair, works closely um, with the three economic development authorities in the Greater Williamsburg, as well as Launchpad and William & Mary Entrepreneurship Hub. So um, please join me in welcoming both of them. And then also we look forward to your presentation today. Hi, good morning, good afternoon. Thank you very much for the introduction. Along with you folks, I, I look forward to the chance that we can actually meet in person again, uh, hopefully sooner rather than later. But I did want to take advantage of this opportunity to speak to you to uh, tell you a little bit about SCORE. So let me bring, bring my slides up. There we go. Uh, and it's important because SCORE has changed over the years, but uh, one thing has, but uh, SCORE, so SCORE provides free and confidential advice to people who want to start or expand a small business. And we do this through one-on-one -on -one mentoring, workshops, and access to other resources. And locally we have 22 mentors with over a thousand years of business experience to aid local entrepreneurs. So that would be our elevator speech. I, I don't like the term, but uh, uh, it, it, it works. It, it is, it's a very short and thorough explanation of what we do. And what my expectation today with you folks is to let, is to let you know that SCORE is available throughout not just Williamsburg, but the historic triangle and all the way down the peninsula to help uh, entrepreneurs that are either thinking about starting a business or uh, growing a business. And we also work with nonprofits. And the second point is that a, num a number of you today, I think would make excellent mentors, either now or in a few years. And in order to get that assistance or to become a mentor, uh, you go to score.org. And if you want, if uh, you're talking with someone that needs some help to start a business, you just push the blue button, find a mentor at score.org. And later on, when you're re ready to become a mentor or when you talk to someone that you think might make a good mentor, you just push the button, apply today. And whichever button you push, you then get to enter some information that gets routed down to our chapter. And we should be reaching out to you within about 48 hours to either give you assistance with your business or talk to you about becoming a uh, mentor. Now, classically, SCORE is the Service Corps of Retired Executives, although you don't have to be an executive or retired in order to join SCORE. And we've been around for over 50 years now with about uh, 250 chapters nationwide. The headquarters is up in Reston, Virginia, and that is paid staff. From that echelon on down, we are all volunteers through a regional vice president, a state district director with six that has six chapters here in the state. Uh, that, the Northern Virginia area, Fairfax County, and that is actually combined with the uh, District of Columbia and some of the Maryland counties as a DC chapter. So we don't go. So we, we don't go up to Northern Virginia, although we're trying to get a new chapter established up there in Fredericksburg. 
And then here in Williamsburg, we've got 22 mentors and we cover the area uh, north to Maryland. We go south to uh, North Carolina, go all the way to the water towards Norfolk and then about halfway to Richmond. Richmond has a very large and active chapter. They have well over 50 mentors with a very robust uh, uh, workshop program. And now that we're into hybrid and Zoom type webinars, uh, we invite many of our clients to tune into the Richmond area for uh, uh, some of their webinars. SCORE is really very large. And uh, we are looking at the numbers from fiscal year 21, where we are on, a, uh, on, on the government fiscal year. Uh, you can see the numbers there, are over 140,000 unique clients mentored. Uh, so we delivered last year across the nation, 730,000 total services. And we can provide support to US citizens and green card holders. Uh, we cannot uh, uh, support foreign entities. And we do that through uh, a, a very large volunteer group. We get uh, by the numbers show you there that uh, we get about 8,000 applications a year, 4,000 become mentors. And at the end of the year, that's typically a net gain of about 50 because as rapidly as volunteers come in to become mentors, they also tend to age out and retire. It's kind of like being a college football coach. You get people in, you train them, and you know that they're going to leave uh, sooner or later. The organization nationally has become a lot more diverse over the years. I've been chapter chair going to the national conventions when we had them. Uh, for, for 10 years now, and early on it was predominantly male, white shirts, and now the, uh, uh, the general makeup, as you can see the numbers there, uh, it's a lot more diverse uh, than, than it was just a few years ago. Here in Williamsburg, through that process, through that website, we get about 350 unique new clients each year. And our numbers for last year are, are shown there. Uh, some clients uh, get a second session very quickly. Uh, often we'll have about three sessions with them, say every month or so, and then they'll drift off and then call in a year or so later with another problem. And we, we, we work with the uh, clients that way. We prefer to do two-on-one -on -one counseling with a co-mentor in there. Uh, and there are many advantages to that, both for the mentors becoming better mentors and the client getting a little bit uh, broader uh, uh, support. When COVID hit, we of course had to stop the in-person workshops. We shifted over to Zoom uh, webinars. Some of the topics were more amenable to that than others, but we did power on through. Uh, we did end up with a lot of mentoring sessions, though, because uh, two of our two of our mentors became experts in the various uh, uh, COVID rescue packages uh, uh, from the uh, Paycheck Protection Plan all the way through. So we were getting a lot of uh, requests on that, and they provided a lot of help to the clients. So through the next year, the the numbers show 1,100 total services. Uh, it's actually higher than that because due to their number keeping system, when we teamed up with some other chapters to present a webinar, uh, the, the numbers never made it in, into the system. And uh, sometimes the follow on mentoring is just a simple email or a short phone call. And sometimes uh, we're not, we're not uh, 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 recording those as often as we should. But those numbers are a good reflection. Uh, with the 22 mentors, uh, when they come on, we're, we ask them uh, to expect maybe up to 20 hours a month as a mentor, but uh, most of them are working uh, probably only eight, eight to 10 hours a month uh, counseling the clients. So here are uh, uh, 22 volunteers we had. Uh, the uh, applications that year, 
how many became mentors, and then uh, uh, some of the some of the mentors uh, moving on to other endeavors. So we've been 20 to 22 volunteers uh, over the course of the last 10 years that I've been uh, involved with the local score. And you can see our numbers of minority and women, and we're actively trying to increase our numbers uh, in those categories. The workshops we do, we do free at the library of uh, how to start your own business. That goes about four times a year. Uh, and I do the how to start and manage a nonprofit, and I do that two or three times a year. Those at the library are free. We, we're doing some noontime webinars that are free via Zoom on uh, various topics. And then Saturday morning at the chamber, and we've have, we are back in person at the chamber, or have been till this latest spike. Uh, and these are the workshops, this is a sampling of the, of the workshops that we do there. Jeremy Johnson comes in to do his very popular legal boot camp. Uh, it always uh, gets a good turnout. Uh, we've added a new one with one of our mentors who does a lot of tax work. Uh, she did a uh, webinar and we'll do another one on preparing for tax filing. And of course, the other things you'd expect us to do on accounting, QuickBooks, human resources, uh, and other topics. And, and I'll come back to that business model canvas. It's a new, relatively new tool that we're having quite a bit of success with. Then we, for some of the workshops, we team with some other people, uh, had a good series with paychecks on human resource, uh, human resources, everything to hiring to firing, uh, to stay out of trouble throughout the, that whole process. We've teamed up with Google. Uh, where, and in both those cases, those organizations provided uh, instructors for in-person seminars. And then we do a lot of special workshops. We've traveled up to Salina and over, over to West Point, doing a lot more work down the peninsula now. One of our mentors is actually lives down in uh, Newport News, and he's pulled together with the chambers and the economic and the small business administration economic development officers down there uh, to extend our presence down through the peninsula and he's got two or three uh, actually three or four mentors that are down in that area that are supporting the one-on-one -on -one counseling we've also done special training for uh, uh, boards of directors of both civic organizations and nonprofits. Uh, Got called in uh, one time on a on a nonprofit. They were they were struggling, and the, that difficult issue uh, uh, is 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 the person who founded the nonprofit six years ago still the right person to be uh, the executive director of the nonprofit several years later? Uh, so again, I've personally have been involved in a uh, in a number of uh, the nonprofits. We also support the chamber. We did 15 under 50 uh, interviewing the candidates for that. Uh, some of our mentors suggested that we ought to have a seven over 70 uh, award also. And we always get a kick out of providing parades for the, uh, uh, providing uh, marshals for the Christmas parade. It was there, there again, it was great to be, a, great to have a chance to do that back in, in person this year. Last spring, we, we, we in SCORE had, had an idea of uh, putting together a panel of business people in the area trying to reach out to the uh, minority communities. And the outgrowth of that was in October, we had a collaborative uh, panel of black and brown entrepreneurs. We were fortunate to end up with uh, uh, Alex, who runs Tipsy Beans Cafe and All Trade Construction. Uh, Tawana, who has uh, Tay Consulting in the Maximum Building. Uh, Dr. Jade Ranger from the Prescription Shop and Dr. Jorge Yanat uh, is both an educator and consultant and also happens to be a uh, SCORE mentor. We put this together along with a lot of work from the uh, chamber and linked up with the NAACP to put the word out. It was a uh, pilot project. Uh, we weren't sure exactly how it would turn out, but overall we were pleased with the, with, with the turnout and with the results. 
Uh, we ended up with 45 people there in the auditorium listening to it live, had another 30 on Zoom, uh, some very favorable reviews. And of course, having coordinate that, that re-energized the relationships among uh, the, uh, SCORE, the NAACP, and the Chamber. So we've already uh, reviewed the results of that. And uh, uh, as a teaser, we may have another one uh, or two later this year. But that's the type of uh, freedom that we are given here in the individual SCORE chapter to work to uh, support small businesses in innovative ways. And we are given the autonomy, or perhaps we just take the autonomy to go do things that we think would uh, support the small business community. And this was uh, one, one of the latest projects that we had in that category. Here's a look from a snapshot from one of our SCORE meetings back in uh, uh, 2020. So who are these mentors? They've got a wide range of experience. And I just, from memory, put down what, I, uh, what the uh, background of some of the mentors that we've had uh, over the years. It's, it, it, it's wide ranging. Uh, I added that one at the bottom. Uh, that uh, obviously is me. Uh, but it, it points to the fact that not, you don't necessarily have to have run a small business in order to become a good mentor. Uh, they, we, we have a very broad skill set across the mentors, but just because someone has a finance and budgeting question doesn't mean that we will immediately give them one of the mentors uh, with a specialty in that. Uh, we are, all the mentors are broadly qualified across the whole range of uh, starting a business and maintaining a business here in Virginia. And generally, it's not that specific on the core of the business. The example I give is if, if I have a person come in and they want to start a paint business, they want to uh, start uh, painting houses. Uh, I'm not going to tell them that he, what color paint he ought to use or that he needs to put more wrist action in the, uh, in, in, in the brush strokes. That, if, if he's going to be a good painter, he's, he's got to figure that out on his own. But we will work with him on all the other aspects of running that business, making sure that he's uh, uh, got the right business license, that he's probably established a, uh, a uh, limited liability company and properly registered with the state. Uh, we get worried about his, his exposures of liability, and that, of course, varies with the different uh, uh, activities of the of the company. Uh, this is a list of from the uh, SCORE National site of the attributes that they're looking for in mentors. And while I agree with that, I, I would point out that it doesn't say anything about specifically starting or running a small business. That comes through the training and through the experience uh, that you develop with uh, a SCORE, with co-counseling with other mentors and, and, and meeting clients that have specific problems. These are the priorities of most of our mentors. Uh, they enjoy mentoring, they're pretty good at it, but they have a lot of other things that uh, are more important to, to them, to us for that matter, uh, but they still manage to find 20 hours a month or 30 hours a month in some cases to support mentor, to support mentoring for SCORE. Briefly, the process is that to, to get mentors, and I'll talk about the clients in, in just a minute, is uh, you, the, the application goes up to SCORE National. They do a, a background check. We'll get, it'll be referred down to us within 36 hours. We do a, uh, we interview the uh, potential mentor, and then uh, uh, if 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 we if we think uh, that he can help us and and we can help her, we would then uh, uh, do some online orientation and ethics and counseling dynamic training off of the SCORE National website. 
uh, assign him a local coach and go through some co-counseling sessions, attend a local workshop that we run on start your own business, get those basics down. And then when the potential mentor believes uh, they are ready and we think they're ready, we can submit them for national certification. And here, here, here are the benefits of being a SCORE mentor. When you come on board, uh, we'll give you a SCORE coffee cup. When you have been certified as a, as a mentor by SCORE National, you get this good looking coin down there. And then anywhere three to five years later, uh, after good service, we'll get you a uh, Jefferson Cup. Uh, we, when we came up with the idea of the Jefferson Cup, one of the early thoughts, of course, is as they're ready to leave, but that's kind of a bad time. Uh, we ought to give it to them while they're still with us, uh, put it on the, on the bookshelf at home, serves as an advertisement or marketing for, for SCORE. We think we've done pretty good for uh, SCORE National. We get evaluated each year and we've consistently been gold or platinum on the annual award. SCORE National does two measures of the, of the chapter. They do a survey of all of the volunteers to try to get at the idea of how well they are engaged. Are they just dabbling with SCORE or are they really engaged with SCORE? They, uh, they, they understand our mission, they understand the current objectives and emphasis. And uh, uh, about five years ago, we, we received some recognition uh, as the most improved uh, chapter for volunteer engagement across the country. And then most recently, the, as a result of that survey, uh, we were actually the most engaged uh, in, in, in small market. We were actually number five out of 250 chapters across the country, but we were kind of, uh, kind, kind of proud of that. Uh, we had another uh, client several years ago, uh, uh, Kathy Reynolds, who developed a, a mobile dental hygienist program uh, that took not only the initiative of trying to create this new concept, but uh, many trips over to Richmond to uh, affect the laws and regulations so that a uh, dental hygienist could own and operate a company doing that without being under the direct supervision and control of a, uh, of, of a licensed dentist. Uh, but she, that was a whole team approach. We had about four mentors, four different mentors working with her for a full year before she was ready to put out her uh, 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 shingle and, and actually start traveling around to, to different facilities to provide this mobile dental care uh, is a uh, great success story. And the other recognition we get, of course, is the gratif gratitude of satisfied clients and the satisfaction of, of, of helping others. Uh, this here I mentioned, we also support the chamber in selecting the 15 under 50. Uh, rather proud of our vice chair, Sal Sotas, uh, a few months ago. Uh, he received a certificate of recognition and appreciation signed by the three economic development officers of the, of, of the historic Triangle region, uh, the William and Mary uh, uh, supervisor over there and their uh, uh, launch pad and entrepreneurial outreach program, along with the CEO of the chamber, uh, Terry Benaz. And, uh, and, and we also awarded one of our uh, famous Jefferson Cups to Naomi Flythe, who has been so supportive of us uh, ever since I first met her uh, 11 years ago when I uh, joined SCORE. People often ask, who's your typical client? And there is no typical client. Uh, I can I can talk about uh, uh, sample clients, and here's a list just of the clients that I've been exposed to, from running to buy a business to selling a product to the to the Marine Corps, a, a very significant product. Uh, I talked about Kathy Reynolds uh, uh, 
I just happened to be chair when she received the award. The uh, uh, all the hard work had been done earlier by Sal and Dennis and many of the other mentors. Uh, I, I have the one here on uh, making permanent a scholarship because to me that brings out the idea that this person, this this group of people, had been running this scholarship, and they wanted to make sure that it would live beyond them. And we figured out that the best way to do that was to go link in this case with the Williamsburg uh, Foundation, who already has scholarship programs, knows how to uh, manage scholarship programs, and they were able to uh, 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 fold their rather direct scholarship into the Greater Williamsburg uh, 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 Foundation. That, that met all, all of their needs and they were still involved in the selection of, of the recipients. And of course, uh, the typical one, I need more customers for my business. And I'll use this as an example, just to go in a little bit, so show you how we tend to approach this today. Of course, the old days we'd sit there and give them a sample business plan and say, hey, go write 30 pages of a business plan. But now we've, uh, we, we work with a, uh, thing called the uh, business model canvas. So I've got a client that wants more customers for her for her business. So we we sit down to figure out who are your ideal customers. And in the in the jargon, that would be the customer segments. Uh, you you tend to have different clusters of customers, whether they be uh, uh, older, younger, professional, uh, whatever, and and work with them to de define those those different customer groups. What are their demographics? What are their characteristics? So that you can then just discover how you can connect with them. How can you reach them? What do they have in common? So that you can establish your customer channels, be they Facebook, email, uh, a website that goes back to your value proposition to develop and refine your value proposition. So often, you know, you're asked, what do you do? And you end up with a, a different explanation to for whoever is asking it. But my value proposition, proposition for SCORE is we provide free and confidential advice to people who want to start or expand a small business. And we, I, I showed this earlier, and it's the answer I give whenever anybody asks what we do at SCORE. And without getting into all the details, it meets the criteria of a value proposition that says not just what you do, but how you do it and uh, why you are better positioned than other people that are out there doing the same thing. What is the value that your business provides that is not currently out there? So this is the business model canvas that we're, uh, that we're modeling this after. It starts here with the value proposition that says what you do. You then have the customer segments over here and you develop the customer channels, those intermediaries that you can work with or through in order to get your message uh, over to the customer seg over to these different uh, customer segments. And then you can address the customer relationships that you're going to establish. And then what are the revenue streams that are going to come out of that? And these different customer segments may be generating different revenue streams. And then you come over, who are the key partners that you must have on board in order to deliver your value? And they're not necessarily your employees, but they may be major subcontractors or other people that you work with so that you can then identify what are the key resources you need to keep the partners happy and what are the key activities that you have to do. And then associated with all this is what's the cost structure that supports this. So this has been around for five or seven years now, uh, developed uh, by the universities and then evolved a, a little bit, but it gives you on one page a good view of your entire operation, large or small, and it's certainly a lot more interesting than trying to go through a 35 page uh, business plan. Now there's still a role for that business plan when it comes time to go get money in order to put the whole story together on paper 
so that the loan officer and the loan approving authority uh, can be convinced that you understand your business and that you have made solid estimates of your costs and expenses such that it is likely that there'll be sufficient money to repay the loan. Uh, so there's still a role for the classic business plan, but uh, uh, it's, uh, there's a definite place for developing the business model canvas too. So why do we mentor? To some, it's giving back to the community. Uh, certainly, I've, since I've been involved with SCORE, the, uh, the uh, clients that I've met have been fascinating and interesting. Uh, the, the other mentors are a, a talented group of people. Uh, there are many different reasons why the different people mentor, and maybe it's just getting out of the house. So now you know that SCORE is available to help new struggling growing business throughout the area. And many of you, if not today, later on, uh, I'm certain could make a uh, good mentor. And in order to do either of those, uh, get help or become a mentor, the answer is the same, it's SCORE.org. I still carry business cards, but I tell people go to score.org. Uh, you cannot enter it through me because then I have to try to remember all your contact information and I'll mess it up. It's easier for everyone to just go to score.org. Then you're in the system, we're tracking you. We, I'll get a, as chair, chapter chair, I'll get a nasty gram if you haven't been contacted in five days. So, uh, to, to get the help to become a mentor, go to score.org and find a mentor or apply today. So that's all I have. I am anxious to uh, answer any questions you may have. Are there any questions out there? Yes, and I know Adria cannot see the questions right now, but um, we have one uh, that came in from uh, uh, Council member Ted Maslin, he said, Dean, thanks. What creative recommendations or solutions have you seen to address labor shortages and challenges? I'm sorry, let me turn up the volume here. Can you say that again, please? Sure. Uh, uh, Ted Maslin asks, what creative recommendations or solutions have you seen to address labor shortages and challenges? That's, that's, that's a great question, and I don't have an answer to that. Uh, I, I'm aware of it, perhaps not as acutely as you folks are. Uh, I, 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 I know it's a problem. Uh, many of my clients are not yet facing that. So I'm, I'm you know, talking from my experience. Uh, they, are, they are looking forward to the to the chance, to, to, to the time when they can do that. Uh, as I talk though, I remember back, uh, we did have that discussion with uh, uh, Alex from the, from the Tipsy Bean and the way that he has been able to maintain his workforce, both in his restaurant and his construction trades. He is very involved with his, uh, uh, with, with his employees that came out during the, uh, during the panel discussion that we had uh, back in October. Uh, and uh, it, he, he was successful on a, uh, on, a, on a number of different levels. Uh, I might suggest you get in touch directly with him. I'm, I'm, I'm hesitant to, to, to say too much about what his approach was, although he did talk about it in generalities in public, but uh, he's very proud of what he has accomplished over there at the Tipsy Bean. He has not had uh, uh, a, a problem with uh, not enough employees, and uh, uh, so he, he, he would be worth stopping by and, uh, to, and, and talking to him. I, I know I dodged your question, but that's about the best I can do. And I don't see any more questions in the chat right now. If anybody does have a question, you can ask in the chat or raise your hand um, as an attendee, but I don't see anything else right now. 
Okay, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to talk about an organization that I that obviously has given me a, a lot of uh, enjoyment, challenges, and uh, uh, meeting some fascinating and interesting people, and I dare say uh, making a difference to a number of people. Yes, Dean, and thank you so much for your time today. First and foremost, thank you for volunteering for this wonderful organization. Both you and the other 20 plus volunteers are truly making a huge impact on struggling and new businesses in our community and really helping those develop and thrive in, in the greater you know, Williamsburg area. So thank you for that presentation today. It was very helpful, very informative. And I think a big takeaway, as Dean said, is if you are interested either in um, being mentored or becoming a men mentor, um, to go to score.org and fill out those applications. This is a, a huge resource that we have available to us in this community. And so Dean and Sal both, thank you both for your time and volunteerism, um, but also for this presentation this afternoon. So if there are no other questions for Dean, I know Joanna just had a quick update for the EDA. Um, so we'll, we'll switch over to that real fast. Yes, yeah, give me one second here. All right. Um, and I'll start with you. My name is Joanna Scrabala. Yuri Adams is out of the office today, but um, I'm happy to give a quick update here on behalf of our economic development office. Um, first, our CDBG grant, the uh, phase three, that is still open, but we're right at the end. Um, we have less than $100,000 among the three municipalities that this grant, um, the partners involved, the uh, City of Williamsburg, City of Pocosin, and York County. So we only have $100,000 left. Um, again, this grant is up to $15,000 in rent or mortgage reimbursement. Um, if you've applied before and received $5,000, you can apply again for this. Um, but all of our information is on yesmilliamsburg.com, so please check that out. And then also, I uh, just want to uh, announce a couple of our upcoming speakers for the roundtable. They will be virtual again for February and March. In February, we have Brian Mann, the Director of Athletics at William & Mary. We'll give the future of athletics at William & Mary, if that's the topic. Um, and then in March, we have Peter McHenry, who's Professor of Economics at William & Mary, and he will give a 2022 economic outlook. So those are uh, upcoming and those registration links are live. So you can go to the website um, to register for those roundtables. And that's it for, for us right now. Thank you for that EDA minute. Um, please join us for the next two roundtable sessions. We're looking forward to both of the speakers from William & Mary. Um, otherwise, I hope everyone makes it a great day to do business in Williamsburg and really appreciate you joining today and hope everyone has a great week.